When the C919 made its first commercial flight, Chinese media immediately hailed it as a historic triumph, a jet designed, assembled, and operated by Chinese engineers, a bold declaration that China was ready to challenge Western aviation technology. However, when examining each component of the aircraft, a startling truth was revealed. This raised serious doubts about its viability, especially after the United States issued a shocking announcement concerning the jet. Is it truly a made-in-China aircraft? And how has the U.S. already determined the fate of this plane? Let's find out. To begin, let's return to the essence of developing a high-tech product. Something many mistakenly believe only requires an assembly line, funding, and political will. The commercial aviation industry, especially the development of modern narrow-body aircraft, is not just another industrial sector. It represents a sophisticated intersection of cutting-edge fields, aerodynamics, precision engineering, composite materials, flight control software, and operational economics, all built upon decades, sometimes even a century, of trial, error, and refinement. So when COMAC, the Commercial Aircraft Corporation of China, announced its intent to create a direct rival to the Airbus A320neo and Boeing 737 MAX, the whole world doubted that this was anything more than an empty claim. The C919 was China's first bold attempt to elbow its way into a dinner table long monopolized by two Western giants. But instead of climbing the mountain on its own, COMAC chose a more level path. It didn't invent it integrated. No in-house engine, no self-developed flight software, not even a fully domestically designed avionics system. Each component was imported, one by one. From a tactical perspective, this strategy was arguably justified. Relying on off-the-shelf technologies helped shorten the development timeline, minimize technical risks, and most importantly, delivered a flyable product in time to flexing muscles. And indeed, the C919 flew. It was delivered to China Eastern Airlines. It featured prominently in state media campaigns as living proof of China's aviation self-reliance. But here's where the story gets truly interesting. To get an aircraft off the ground, you need more than a fuselage and a slogan. You need a power, and in the C-919's case, that power is the Leap 1C engine, jointly developed by General Electric, US, and Safran, France. So, what happens if the engines are no longer supplied? Without it, the aircraft is nothing more than a scrap heap parked on the tarmac. When the U.S. began imposing tighter export restrictions on advanced technologies to China, including aircraft engines, the symbol of technological independence, was instantly rendered powerless. Ironically, the very product created to break free from Western dominance turned out to be entirely dependent on Western approval. No Leap 1C, C919, is nothing. Self-reliance becomes a hollow slogan when a simple nod from Washington can grind the entire program to a halt. This isn't just a technical risk, it's a strategic one. Because in aviation, the price of shortcutting the process isn't just technological inferiority, it's dependency, neatly wrapped in the packaging of progress. And for this Chinese domestic aircraft, that lesson didn't come from the market, but from the very core weakness in its development path, building a flagship with borrowed parts. Hold on, still with us? You're the best. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to like, share, and hit subscribe. It means the world and keeps us flying with stories that matter. Thanks a ton. But the issue was soon resolved. In a surprising yet calculated move, the US government allowed COMAC to resume importing Leap 1C engines and key components from Honeywell and Collins Aerospace. This decision pulled the C919 program back from the brink of collapse. But just as the aircraft survived its first existential threat, it ran headfirst into the next challenge, mass production. What was once a symbolic prototype must now transition into full-scale industrial manufacturing, where real industrial strength determines success or failure. COMAC has set an ambitious target, ramping up production from around 50 aircraft per year to 150 to 200 by 2029. Yet when viewed against current reality, the gap between ambition and capacity remains daunting. As of mid-2025, this manufacturer has managed to produce fewer than 10 C919s per year, most of which have gone to China Eastern Airlines and a few other domestic carriers. These modest figures not only reveal slow progress, but also expose a critical shortfall in China's ability to sustain a complete 
aerospace industrial ecosystem. Unlike cars or smartphones, commercial aircraft cannot be scaled up using standard mass production techniques. Every component, from wings and fuselage to avionics and flight software, must pass layers of rigorous certification tests, often spanning years. A single flawed bolt can ground an entire fleet. This is where China's deep-rooted industrial limitations come into sharp focus. Despite having an edge in manufacturing scale, China still lacks core technologies. Lightweight composite materials with long lifespans, advanced turbine blade casting, FAA EASA, compliant autonomous testing systems, and most notably, the ability to develop reliable indigenous jet engines. Designs can be reverse engineered, but operational know-how, testing discipline, and long-term optimization are assets that take decades to cultivate not months. The domestic supply chain is another stumbling block. Most of Comac's Tier 1 and Tier 2 suppliers still rely heavily on joint ventures or partially transferred foreign technologies rather than truly independent capabilities. This raises a serious question. Can speed ever substitute for technological depth? Or does accelerating production without solid foundations only further expose China's dependence and lack of global standard precision? For the Chinese manufacturer, the challenge is no longer about having an aircraft, it's about whether the C919 can become a fully certified, widely accepted commercial airliner, mass-produced with reliability, backed by a global support network, something Airbus and Boeing have spent decades perfecting. The answer, for now, remains uncertain. But one thing is clear. With each step forward, Comac's journey on the runway is also a test of whether its foundations can withstand the weight of global expectations. However, even if Comac overcomes the technical and industrial hurdles, a much larger barrier still stands in the way. Market confidence. In the commercial aviation industry, technology has never been the sole determinant of success. Customers, including airlines, investors, passengers, and regulators, look at safety records, aftermarket support ecosystems, and long-term reliability. Airbus and Boeing have millions of flight hours of data. They operate global maintenance networks, parts supply chains, training teams, and above all, a trust that has been built over decades. In contrast, the C919 is currently operated only by a few Chinese state-owned airlines. Virtually no customers from Europe or North America have signed contracts. And when a product is perceived as a political tool rather than a commercial solution, it struggles to earn the neutrality it needs. Finally, you may know halting C919 would be easy for the US just by a move. But keeping it in limbo, unable to die, yet never fully independent, is the smarter way to ensure Beijing remains constrained. And so, this aircraft, despite its nationalistic branding, continues to fly under the shadow of cross-border power plays. Every C919 flight, every signed contract, is in fact a political litmus test. Is Beijing still behaving in Washington's eyes? In US hands, the engine is no longer a mere piece of machinery. It's a tool of leverage, a pressure valve, a steel collar clamped around China's dream of technological independence. Therefore, under growing pressure to reduce reliance on Western technology, China has placed a major bet on the CJ-1000A a domestically developed jet engine by the Aero Engine Corporation of China AECC. The ambition is clear to replace the Leap 1C with a made-in-China engine, gaining full control from design to production, from hardware to software. But jet engine development is unlike any other industry. It's not just a technical challenge, it's a decades-long process of accumulating knowledge, experience, and standardization. So far, the CJ-1000A has only completed ground tests and limited flight trials. Reports indicate that the engine has run on some test aircraft, but long-term reliability, maintainability, and fuel efficiency, the most critical factors, have yet to be proven on a large scale. Although AECC has targeted commercial readiness by 2028 to 2029, there remains a significant gap between being technically ready and being market accepted. Ultimately, the C919 is not just an aircraft. It is a litmus test of a nation's technological ambition, a symbol of an economy striving to break free from the shadow of the West. In an era where technology is a new form of power, 
Mastering a complex product like a commercial airliner is the boldest statement of national capability. But such mastery cannot rely solely on massive investments or slogans of self-reliance. This aircraft still contains numerous core components sourced from the US and Europe. Even if the airframe is domestically built, even if parts of the flight management system are localized, it will only be truly made in China when the entire supply chain, from materials to engines, is fully controlled and owned. History offers sobering lessons. Japan failed with the YS-11 despite its advanced engineering. Russia has struggled with the Sukhoi Superjet after global supply chains fractured. Brazil succeeded with Embraer not because it did everything alone, but because it strategically chose what to master and built its ecosystem step by step. What about China? What do you think about this development path of China's aviation? Please share your thoughts with us. Thank you and stay safe.